Today, we're having a look at the brand new anamorphic Suray 24 millimeter lens. And for those of you who don't know what anamorphic is, it's basically a oval type lens that will produce you beautiful oval bokeh and those cool horizontal sci-fi light streaks or lens flares. Now what's unique about this lens is its price point and its size. So you won't be able to find another anamorphic lens that is built this well for this price and for this size. But don't let the size fool you. It's not a lightweight lens. It weighs about 1.7 pounds. So there is quite a bit of weight to this thing. And it's actually heavier than a few of my Zeiss lenses. So keep that in mind. This is a 2.8 lens. It has an eight bladed aperture and a solid metal construction. Now this is a fully manual lens, meaning that there's no contact points to communicate with your camera's autofocusing system or just any data whatsoever. So you have to control your focus and your aperture 100% manually directly on the lens. Now some other lenses on the market really don't have a smooth ring when it comes down to adjusting the aperture or even the focus. Some of them just feel very cheap and just not smooth. But if you have a closer look at this lens, when you feel it, when you actually spin the dials and the rings, it's extremely silent and very smooth. Just take a look at how the iris opens and closes as I move the aperture ring. Extremely smooth. Now, as mentioned earlier, this is a 24 millimeter lens, but an APS-C format, which means that if you're shooting on a full frame camera like the Sony a7S III, you're going to have a 150% crop factor. So when this says it's 24 millimeter, it's actually 36 millimeter in full frame. Now, if you're shooting with the Sony a7S III or any other full frame camera, make sure you're getting the right mount. For example, they have a Micro Four Thirds mount, they have a Sony E mount and so on. So make sure you order that right mount. Now, if you're shooting with a camera like the Sony a7S III, you have to make sure you have the right camera settings. For example, if you just mount this lens onto your full frame camera, you're most likely gonna have some heavy vignetting. That's because we need to crop the sensor so that way it pushes into the lens and you get full field of view. And to do this with a Sony a7S III or other similar Sony cameras, you have to go into the menu, then you have to turn on the APS-C mode. Now for the Sony a7S III, there is a little bit of an issue here. This is a 4K camera. It's not a 6K downsampled camera, it's a solid 4K camera. So when you're cropping in on this sensor, you're losing resolution. So you're gonna be downgrading to a 1080p resolution. So keep that in mind when you're using this lens with this camera. Now, if you're shooting with, let's say, a Sony a7 III or like my Sony a9, for example, well, those are actually 6K cameras downsampled to a 4K resolution. So when you're switching into APS-C mode on those cameras, you're still going to be shooting in 4K resolution. Now, as you're looking through my sample footage, take note that this is all done in 1080p. So it's not going to be as sharp as 4K. However, the images that came out of this lens were very good. And to be honest, I'm still not used to focusing properly on this lens just because the focusing distance on this ring is just a little bit tricky since all the numbers are spaced out differently, the focal distances are spaced out differently. So each lens is unique and it does need a lot of practice. And I actually used this lens on my gimbal, my Juin Crane 2S gimbal, and I made a video on that right here, actually a, a tutorial video on how I practice focusing with this lens. So if you haven't already, check out that video because I'm sure it's gonna help you out, especially if you're gonna be using this kind of manual lens on a gimbal. I do recommend that you get a follow focus system because controlling focus like this constantly can be a little bit tough. It's nice to have that dial. You have more control over your lens and your camera. Now with an anamorphic lens, you are going to get a stretched picture, which means on the Y axis, everything is gonna be stretched out. So this is actually gonna to have to make you go into post-processing and adjust that and it's called de-squeezing. And I made a tutorial on that right here. So check that out as well. 
So you can see that all we really need to do is just to reshape the y-axis and you're good to go to get that accurate picture that everybody wants. Now let's talk about the bokeh balls and those are really important. When you're comparing this oval-like anamorphic lens to let's say a spherical lens, you're gonna get a completely different shaped bokeh in your background. And this is a 2.8 aperture lens, which means that you're gonna get a pretty shallow depth of field or otherwise known as a blurry background. And with that blurry background, you're gonna get some really cool effects when you're shooting with lights. Now, is this a lens for everyday use? Definitely not. It's an artistic and unique lens, so only for those of you who have a specific vision or a specific look that you wanna go after, or if you just want shots to be artistic in a certain way, then this is when you pull out this lens, but it's an artistic lens. It's not something that you can just pull out on a client shoot and expect everything to be perfect. No, this is for something that you really need a specific look for. So definitely keep that in mind. And uh, I wouldn't say that this is a beginner's lens. This is something for intermediate to advanced users, someone that's very used to shooting on a manual focus lens. Now, something that I was really happy about with this lens is that it has a 72 millimeter thread which means that I can attach my ND filters to this thing. So you can be shooting outside with this lens at f2.8 and get that shallow depth of field just as long as you use an ND filter. And I'll link some recommended ND filters down in the description box below, so make sure you check that out too. Overall, my experience with this lens is very positive. The biggest thing about this lens that impressed me is the build quality. Suray definitely upped the game. This is a lens that does not feel cheap. Just by holding it and feeling it, you can definitely tell that Suray took their time to build this lens. They heard from the market and that's why they released this 24 millimeter. They also have a 35 and a 50 millimeter, but in the future, I would love for them to create a full frame anamorphic lens. I know the size and the price is gonna skyrocket, but in my opinion, a lot of people are switching over to full frame and I would just love to see Suray create something for the full frame market. So if you're interested in getting this type of lens, check out the Indiegogo link down below. This is a lens for those of you who definitely want an artistic style added to your videos. So just keep that in mind. And I think this lens will make you have so much fun. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in another video. Peace.